Hello, members of Faith Lutheran. Welcome to our congregational update video. The Apostle Paul begins almost every single one of his New Testament letters with a statement that goes something like this. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. In my prayers, I thank God for all of you and rejoice together with you in our salvation in Christ. It's my privilege to say the same thing to all of you. Grace, mercy, and peace to you. God's grace is his undeserved love for sinners just like us. His mercy is that he took the punishment that we deserve. And peace is the result. Peace with God, peace right in our hearts and lives, peace even in a world full of unrest. Grace, mercy, and peace to you. And they come from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And I, in my prayers, thank God for all of you as well. I thank God for all of the leaders who have served in this church in the past, for all of the leaders who are serving right now, who you'll hear from in just a little bit. And for all of you who have served in so many ways here at church, for all of you who have encouraged each other, for all of you who have encouraged me, and for all of us who have worshipped here in this place. And I pray that this video update would be a blessing to all of you. Church, Psalm 122.1 says, I rejoice with those who said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. What a fantastic passage. Believers in Christ are excited to worship together. It's been really hard not coming to our church for worship for these last three months and being able to see all of you. We miss seeing each other and worshiping our Savior together. For the last couple of weeks, Jared, Pastor, and myself have been working together on a plan for returning to church. In connection with the Centers for Disease Control, Minnesota Department of Health, our Synod, and our nearby Wells churches, we are excited to share that plan with you now. Attached in an email, you will find a complete plan and document. Please read through the entire document. We won't be able to cover every single point of it in this video today. Two general guidelines that will always be in place are as follows. If you feel uncomfortable coming to church, or if you are in a high-risk category for infection, or if you're feeling sick in any way, please refrain from attending worship for the time being. We will be recording the Sunday worship service and we'll make those videos available to everyone online. Number two, if you are planning on coming to church, please take common sense precautions before you come, like washing and sanitizing your hands, consider wearing a face covering of some kind, bring your own copy, maybe use a bathroom facilities at home. Our church council has set our return to worship date on Sunday, July 12th. And we will have three worship services, 9 a.m. and 10.30 a.m. on Sundays, as well as 6.30 p.m. on Monday nights. And as of this recording, the number of people allowed to gather together inside of a church is 50% of the building's capacity. The Church Council has established that that number for us will be right around 50 people. And based on the survey responses that we received from you, spreading out between three worship services should work out just fine for us. Our return to worship in our church is going to roll out in three phases. The first phase, beginning on July 12th, is going to be very limited. The worship service will only be about 30 to 35 minutes long, very similar in content to the videos that I've been making during this shutdown. Unfortunately, there will be several beloved, cherished things that we will forego for the time being. We won't be gathering here in the entryway or in the fellowship hall to enjoy each other's company. 
There won't be anything for you to grab in your church mailbox or anything to sign up for in the sign-up corner. Instead, we ask that you simply would head right into the church sanctuary and find a place to sit for worship. Finding a seat for worship means observing a distance of six feet in front and behind and side to side. Obviously, family members can sit together. You can sit together as close as you'd like. After worship, we would ask that you would exit the church. Feel free to enjoy each other's company outside. During the worship service, we won't have anything in our hands. The hymnals will all be stored away and no bulletins will be printed. We will instead be installing a screen in the front of the church. The screen will display all of the worship info for us to see. Unfortunately, during this first phase, we won't be singing. There will be some music that will be played uh, throughout the worship service, but we won't be adding our beautiful voices and song just yet. And most unfortunately, during that first phase, we also won't be receiving the Lord's Supper during the worship service. Starting in the month of July, I will, however, be offering private communion sometime during the week. And I'll get a lot more information out to all of you uh, about how that's going to work and what that will look like. Private communion starting in the month of July. That's a summary of the first phase of returning to worship in the church. The second phase will see many of those cherished and beloved parts of our worship service come back. We look forward to that. The third phase is aimed at returning to worship as similar as possible to what it looked like before the shutdown. Now these three phases don't have exact dates for when they will advance. As new information and guidelines come out from our local and state government, and Lord willing, as we see the spread of this virus decrease, our church council will determine when it's time to move into the next phase. The church council will be hiring a cleaning company to come in once a week and clean and sanitize our church facility. This will provide us with a much needed added level of help as well as peace of mind for when we gather. For worship on Sundays and Monday nights, the ushering and elders will be taking the lead on sanitizing the sanctuary before and after worship. And to that end, we also want your help. After each worship service, the ushers and elders will provide sanitizing wipes for the areas where you sat. should use the facilities or the restrooms, please consider wiping contact areas there as well. I rejoiced with those who said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. I rejoice with all of you. As we say these words together, it is a tremendous blessing to gather with fellow believers for worship to be filled together with the gospel of salvation in word and sacrament. We pray that this plan and these precautions would be beneficial for all of us to keep us safe and to curb the spread of this virus throughout our families and community. To that end, we ask the Lord to bless us and keep us in his care. Roger Toomey, glad to see everybody back. Uh, it's been a long few months, I know, since March. It's been even a longer many months since we started talking about new creations and the ability to use our land to increase our mission. Uh, obviously, if you come and you look, you can see that the land is now cleared and the building's about to start. We 
we are planning now to open new creations. The facility should be open in December, January 1st at the very, very latest. So it's an ongoing process. It's been a long process, 14 months actually, in getting everything through the city, everything from the storm drainage to the septic sewer, to the water lines, to our neighbors not necessarily wanting to have anything on our property. But we are now rolling ahead. The two lots, when they're done, will have $9 million of improvements on them versus the bare lots. I thought we first would do is I committed all along of what we would generate for revenue from the sale. If you look at the original projection, we said we'd sell a lot for 300,000. Closing costs, we estimated at 10,000, legal at 15, the loan payoff, which we had to pay off the loan because if you remember, we had very little cash in the bank and we had very little savings. So the church became our collateral for getting the loan. So as a requirement of closing, we need to pay off the loan, which now leaves us debt free, obviously. And that proceeds were expected to be $93,000. Uh, what happened in the end on the other side to get to our final numbers, uh, the city at the last minute said that Amcon needed as a first developer to finish all the storm drainage issues and pay for the entire process. So even as lot one was theirs, they also had to pay for lot two. Didn't seem like a logical good conclusion. So what I did is the developer of lot two will pay the additional $47,000 to us outside of the cost of buying lot two. Our closing costs, uh, if you see, we got down to $2,369. Uh, and that's primarily because we had an out-of-state closing at a very inexpensive rate. Legal costs, $7,300. Because once again, rather than drafting, and crafting the agreements, we chose the path of our attorney and myself of editing and working on that basis. So editing versus drafting are quite different financially. So then it once again saved us a lot of amount of money. We got within $100 of what we expected to be for the loan payoff, generating what will be a net proceeds we're all done of $108,229. You can see from the first picture that the um, New Creations is a very attractive building, and it also will be able to attract a lot of new people to our community and our church. And uh, that's really what we were trying to do with our mission statement. Lot two, uh, this is the prototype of the townhomes that will be put on lot two. Uh, there will be, we're still working on, there's a number of things, of course, with setbacks, grades of the land, etc. that right now we're working on a plat it will be presented hopefully to the city council in July. Uh, and then it'll tell us how many of these actual townhomes we can get in that area. This is a prototype, which is being built right now in New Market and Elko, which when we get closer, we can tell you where they are if you want to see one before we even start building them. Uh, they will be standalone. There'll be no common walls. There'll be 1,800 to 2,000 square feet. One level with a loft or two levels if they want. Uh, there will be an association, so all the landscaping, uh, obviously snow removal, grass, everything will be done by the association. So this is pretty much uh, come and live in the property and everything else is taken care of for you. Now, what are we doing yet on this process? Well, as I said, we've got the July period now to hopefully get in front of the council, get everything done, get everything approved. Since we've been through the sewer, we've been through the water, we've been through the stormwater issues, there isn't a lot left after that. I really expect our legal costs will be a very, very small because we've attacked the major issues and our closing costs will also be small. Uh, I don't have right now, and that will come to the council and to the voters when we get to the right time, uh, what we are looking for for proceeds. And that will be talked about obviously before we settle on the final number. Again, though, I think we have a lot less cost involved and I think this one will be done very quickly. I'm really hoping September, October, we close on lot two, because I think they would also like to get a shovel in the ground before winter comes. So that's really the issues of where we are on lot one and lot two. Uh, we obviously have no debt. We obviously will have somewhere around $400,000 in the bank, plus no debt going forward once lot and two, one and two are officially closed. Uh, one of the other things we're going to talk about is the church sign. You probably noticed over the last year, year and a half, two years, we've really struggled with not having signings that work intermittently or not at all. Um, so we've looked at a company called Stewart Signs, who are based in Florida. Uh, 
They were founded the same year as Faith was. They are a family business. For the first 50 years, the only thing they did were church signs. The last couple of years, they branched out a little bit into nonprofit, police stations, schools, some of that. But again, a majority of the revenue comes from churches. Um, they probably, the number I looked at had about 50 of the local Minneapolis St. Paul churches, their signage was done by Stewart. They provide us with a free wireless plan, so we don't have to have that connectivity cost. And we can actually change the display from a laptop anywhere we are. So when we want that, when that sign changed, we can do it from anywhere, which is kind of a nice thing to have. We wanted to look and see if we could fit it into our current LED cabinet, which is 40 by 112. It does. So that's one of the pieces that we are looking at. Um, again, when we're looking at this, if you see the other signage, the Wells Signia, the church the church name each on it is all kind of in a sad state also. So we want to look at that as part of the process going forward. Um, again, this is really an upgrade to what we are. Maybe give us more notoriety, more signage, more people can see what's here on Faith Lutheran Church. So that's one of the steps that we've taken as the to look at. We are going to bring this further up. Uh, cost on this sign going to be roughly about 23000 still to be final finalized, but very close. Uh, we do have an issue we're addressing with our LED currently is actually enwrapped into our display screen. So there's some concern that it will probably break off when that happens, but we've accounted for that in what our structure is. So I think we're looking somewhere around the 23000 mark. We will bring this to the next voters meeting uh, live where we can talk about cost and features and benefits of it. So again, there's probably more than anything else, more to come on that issue. I'd like to thank you for your time. Uh, looking forward in the next few weeks to seeing everybody live back at church. And again, thank you for all the support that you give the church and the pastor and everyone included in Faith Lutheran. Thanks. Uh, hello, members of Faith Lutheran Church. Um, I'm really uh, grateful to be able to provide you all with a uh, update and to be able to uh, be part of the council video. I hope everybody's doing well and staying safe at home as we uh, as we go through this time. I uh, look forward to seeing everybody again soon. Uh, just to start off with a brief summary, uh, an overview of our finances from January through April. Um, we did have a pretty um, steady uh, expense, although the uh, income was uh, peaks and valleys throughout that period. Uh, overall, our average for the income did come out to about 14,000 a month. Um, and then our expenses remained consistent, average at about 14,600 per month, which is right at our uh, budget that we set for 2020. Um, our total income January through April was 57,000 and our total income uh, I'm sorry, our total expenses was 58000 So we ended up uh, January through April at minus uh, 1000 uh, For the month of May, we received uh, two large member donations totaling $10,000. Uh, we also received $13,000 in May for regular donations, bringing the total donations in May to $23,000. Uh, in addition to our offerings, Faith also qualified for uh, what is a potentially forgivable loan under the CARES Act, the uh, Paycheck Protection Program, um, otherwise known as the PPP loan. This loan was approved for us in the amount of $14,200. Uh, and I'm working with our bank right now to ensure that we meet all of the uh, proper procedures and, um, and, and documentation to make sure that this loan um, is, is forgivable. Uh, so we'll work through that. Uh, basically, this money just ensures that uh, uh, pastor continues to receive regular compensation should we have any interruption, uh, uh, be just being impacted by COVID-19. Uh, so that's really good news there. Um, finally, as Roger will discuss in his address, uh, we have closed on the first lot next door, sold to Amcon for new creations. Uh, the total amount received for the slot was 300000 182 of that, uh, 182000 of that. Um, did go directly to Old National, uh, our lender for the construction loan, uh, which is now paid off in full. Uh, so we don't carry that balance anymore. 
Um, so this means that we will total approximately $109,000 in cash after everything is said and done. Uh, we did already receive $62,000 um, of that amount. Uh, and then we have another 47000 which will be paid to us uh, for a storm drainage system that was originally paid by somebody else. Um, again, Roger's going to go into that in greater detail, so I won't spend too much time there. Uh, as it stands at the end of May, our checking account has uh, $104,000. Our Wells investment account has $43,000, bringing the total cash assets to $147,000. Uh, and once again, once we receive that final uh, chunk of change um, from that lot, uh, 47 uh, will be right around 194, just shy of $200,000, uh, which is a really strong balance sheet going into the uh, going into the third quarter. Um, that is all uh, for the financial update. Uh, just on a personal note, um, I had uh, announced to the council that uh, I've accepted another position with Delta Airlines at our headquarters in Atlanta, Georgia. Um, I have officially started that position this month. Um, and while we don't have a definitive move date just yet, I have begun uh, commuting already to Atlanta. Um, because of that, I have asked the, can the council to begin the search for a replacement treasure. Um, Rachel and I have grown to love Minnesota. We have uh, wonderful friends here, along with the best church family anybody could ask for. And for that, um, we have all of you to thank. So thank you. Um, I'm very honored to have the opportunity to serve over the past four years as your treasurer. Uh, I will do everything that I can to make this transition as smooth and seamless um, as possible. Uh, blessings to you and your family. Have a safe and enjoyable summer. Thanks. Hello, I'm Tom Moritz, uh, trustee at Faith Lutheran Church here in Prior Lake. My main uh, area of responsibility is uh, the outside property, and we've been pretty busy this spring just cleaning everything up around the property. Um, the, um, we've been spraying the entire property for weed control. Uh, we've been cutting and we've been trimming the grass. Uh, we've been patching the sidewalk where it's needed repair in the front, and uh, the flower bed and the, the shrubbery and uh, the, the trees around by the air conditioner that's all been remulched and the flowers have been planted the memorial garden in the back is looking good it's been trimmed up and cleaned out uh, so that's looking good um, overall everything is looking very well and it's looking nice and manicured and the flowers are starting to bloom um, i'd like to thank the following people for helping as much as uh, they have uh, scott demko jared verkey shirley chenard uh, craig Stadala, mike nelson Brian James and my wife Jenny. Um, finally, we eagerly await the time we can all get together again and worship and praise the Lord as one. Thank you and God bless everyone. Hi, Brian here with the trustees. First off, very excited about uh, at least discussing at the moment, um, getting back into worshiping with each other and, and seeing everybody. As far as what I have been doing, um, the last couple months have been pretty quiet without anybody in the building. We have addressed an issue with the uh, lights in the parking lot. Um, hopefully that's fixed. We had a problem with a breaker blowing when it rains. Um, Caltex Electric actually came in and free of charge, um, I believe fixed the problem. So we're keeping our fingers crossed on that. Otherwise, the last week, um, week or two, we've been kind of stockpiling supplies, um, trying to make the sanctuary as um, safe uh, an environment as we possibly can. Um, we've been ordering um, different things, hand sanitizer, antibacterial wipes, um, dispensers for the hand sanitizer that are touch free, um, gloves, masks, that kind of thing. Uh, we do have a pretty good pile um, of stuff. The one thing I would note is anybody, if anybody's out and they see um, antibacterial wipes at a good price, um, we're not finding them um, without a significant upcharge. So I appreciate if anybody would alert me to where to find those or if you if you can find them to um, get them and get them into the church. Um, just uh, uh, small tubs, we can have them in the pews would be great. Um, other than that, we are looking at um, changing our system for cleaning. 
Um, we've currently had groups signing up. We're looking at options to have a company come in um, to just make sure we have a really good job done every week, um, make it a little easier on everybody, um, and make sure it's consistently getting cleaned well. So um, that's something that we're looking into, and I'll, I'll get more information, and we'll have to discuss um, costs and that kind of thing down the road. Um, and we will also be trying to come up with um, more of a, a set plan for um, kind of how to clean in between services and that kind of thing. And um, I think it's really going to rely on everybody being responsible. So um, please keep that in mind when we um, come back to church. I think we can do this um, in a, a relatively safe fashion. And I'm excited about, uh, like I said, getting back. So um, thank you. group of leaders we have here at Faith Lutheran Church. I thank the Lord for each of them and the hard work that they've put in on behalf of all of us. And I thank the Lord for all of you. Even during this time of pandemic and isolation, and even as the precautions that we plan on making as we come back to worship maybe seem a little bit burdensome, even so, just as the Apostle Paul told us, grace mercy and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus. As all these other things change, that never changes. And so we praise and thank the Lord. Until we see all of you next time. Bye now.